Many people fuss and argue over the same thing year in, year out. The enemy it starts with one problem, and this is when the aspect of forgiveness is applied, the aspect of uh, learning how to... Hello everyone, Pastor Jasper here. Uh, I'm come on to be uh, to give you a testimony time, testimony time, testimony about how the Lord set me free from rejection. Um, and one of the act, one of the things that He set me free from, uh, He set me from a lot of stuff. Set me free from a lot of stuff, and that was the lifestyle of sin, a lifestyle of, of you know, um, iniquity, smoke and drink and lust and lying, just a lifestyle of sin. These things He convicted me of. He set me free out of radical salvation. One day. I was one way, the next day I was another way. <clears throat> And I've been living for Jesus ever since. But I got married. And when I got married, a whole slew of problems began to manifest within my personality. And one of the, one of the areas of, uh, that began to manifest in my life that I didn't know what it was until I started know, studying God's love for me is uh, the attitude and the spirit of rejection. And it manifested when my wife told me no or when she, commit, she, was, she would reject. She, it looked as if she would reject me. When she said no, I looked at it as rejection especially in the bedroom and so in that feeling of rejection is when the enemy would try to convince me that she didn't love me if she loved me then she would do what I say if she loved me this 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 and this now and I began to be convinced that she didn't love me or enemy would work on me uh, but then I started to seek the Lord. Why do I do this when my wife do this? Why do I get mad when she do this? I, because I felt like if she, um, I felt like that gave her too much control. If she said no and then I got out of character, I felt like that it was something wrong with me. Why does this little thing get me upset? Why am I so weak? You know, I looked at it as a weakness. You know, why do I um, be to the form of tears when she does this? You know, and so um, the Lord began to deal with my heart. I began to seek him and he began to teach me how to get rid of this thing and how to deal with it. And it was in the, the new commandment is when I found out how much God loved me. And Jesus said a new commandment I give with, unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, in that commandment, Jesus began to teach me what it means for me to love my wife based off how he treated me. Not based off how my daddy treated my mama, not based off how the world taught me I should love my wife. No, he told me to love her based off how he loved me. Now, that changed the game for me because now I begin to assume that I didn't know because now he said, love her like I love you. Now, I love you is my point of study. I, how I love you now is my pursuit of of gaining understanding so that I can accurately lo accurately love my wife without knowing how much God loved me I'm only guessing and assuming I know how to love her now this is what most people do they think they already know and they really don't humble themselves under the mighty hand of God and let God begin to teach them how to truly love like he loved them that is a game changer because we begin to one aspect that God showed me how he loved me the Bible says that while we was yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly that, that is a that is very different then how the world taught me what love was. The Bible says, while we was yet sinners, Christ died. That means God didn't wait on us to repent. He didn't wait on us to say we sorry. He did it while we was at our worst. He loved us and forgave us. While we, he gave us Jesus. Now, in giving Jesus, he did it while we were sinners. Now, many people don't translate that to their own personal life. That means we gonna, we gonna have to love while a person is wrong. And sometimes man that's very difficult it's very difficult you know it's very different than what the world teaches because the world teaches you know very different you know you um don't trust nobody you know the bible says uh, the, the world talks about how we um we shouldn't we shouldn't love like that we don't love wild person we, you got to say you sorry before i forgive you we got to say you sorry before i love you um and you got to you got to do something to show that you are remorseful before I forgive you. That's the world's way. But the Bible says not about the way Jesus taught me and I begin to overcome rejection as I begin to do it God's way. Now, 
there will be many objections for you not to do this. Now, this is what is in, in order for to really, for you to be a um, and to overcome rejection, you have to be a disciple. You have to be one that's not um, that's not alive to do what he wants. You know, because a true disciple is one that's chosen to lay down their life, lay down their will, lay down their ability to choose and do what the master wants. This is the only way you really going to overcome rejection because your feelings and your mind is going to convince you not to go to this extent to love like he loved. To go this this is the, and this is what the this is when the commandment is designed to truly kill your carnal fleshly nature. The commandment is designed to kill your carnal fleshly nature because it's going to give you instructions. Jesus is going to give you instructions that's going to be a direct conflict than what you've been taught up until this point, and that. That aspect of obeying the new commandment really challenged me because he said, love one another. He said, the Bible says, while we was yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That means God gave Jesus to us while we was at our worst. Then he says, that is an aspect of how he loved us. Now I have to start correlating how God did me to my wife. And this really starts setting me free. Because it started getting me into a behavior pattern that was aligned with the cross. And when I did that, now that took that took a few months and years to really for Jesus start renewing my mind and to overcome my emotional self. And even now, my emotional self still tries to uh, beckon a vote. And but Jesus done taught me how to uh, deny myself and how to operate in self-control, despite what my body and my mind tells me. There is a realm of obedience that you can walk in that's not based off how you feel. And this is when the commandment is actually killing you and your carnal fleshly self. Now, that's one aspect of how to obey the, the, the new commandment. Um, another aspect on how to obey the new commandment is the Bible talks about in Isaiah 43 and 25 that God is, he said, I am he who blotteth out your transgressions for my own sake. And then the Bible talks about how I will not remember your sins. Now, this is the biblical version of the phrase forgive and forget. The phrase forgive and forget is not in the Bible. But in this verse, what it should mean, forgive and forget should truly mean this. Um, this is a very challenging thing because you have a lot of people don't understand how Jesus loved them. And the Bible says that he will not remember. He said, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Now, that word remember is very key, and this must be done by faith. Now, this is another aspect of how he loved us. The Bible says that Jesus manifested to take away our sins. Now, now, so what does that mean in our life? How do we correlate how he loved us to how people treat us, and how do we actually take away people? people's sins. No, we're not the lamb. We're not, we're not the one that's, that's going to die for people's sins. But in a way, Jesus teaches us how to truly love how he loved by dying to ourselves and treating people based off how we feel. And that's the form of death that we must take place. Now, so, and that word remember, choosing not to remember is the act of what it means to forgive and forget. Now, God didn't say uh, that you should throw away the wisdom that God that you learn from a person hurting you and doing you wrong. And um, God didn't say that you should just throw the wisdom away. He didn't say that you shouldn't learn nothing from it. But he should say he tells us to love like he loves. So um, God is all knowing. That means he don't forget anything. Actually, the Bible talks about he, he don't forget nothing. So, But he chooses not to remember is a very key phrase that we need to learn prophetically and spiritually. What does this mean? How do I choose not to remember? Um, and it's this. And this is what Jesus taught me and how to really overcome ultimately the spirit of rejection. Is This is the process that I begin to walk out 
that attitude of rejection is what I begin to live, accept God's love for me because I learned that he don't remember my sins. I learned that while I was yet a sinner, sinner, he died for me. Thank God. Now it's my turn to live that love towards somebody else. So how do I choose not to remember? That means this. Many people fuss and argue over the same thing. Year in, year out, the enemy starts with one problem. And this is when the aspect of forgiveness is applied. The aspect of uh, learning how to forgive is applied is when a lot of people, a lot of marriages and a lot of problems are 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 manifested in the form of an argument. An argument is the is is is, is the is, is having two opinions or two uh, sides now. What happens a lot of times in arguments is start out with something little, you know, and then all of a sudden you talking about something you disagree with your spouse on. And then all of a sudden that conversation get carried over into uh, something else they did wrong. All right. This is when the enemy and the and the sin of remembering take place. And see, this is this. I'm getting into something here that's very different than what the world teaches. The Bible talks about the, the world talks about seeing is believing and uh, forgive, but don't ever, ever forget. It's very different. And I'm going to interrupt and solve a lot of problems. The Lord's about to solve a lot of problems in your marriages and in your relationships, in your relationships with your with family. This don't, just don't apply with your wife or your spouse, but it can apply to your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, co-workers, um, uh, races of people, uh, the president. It, it, it can apply to so many different aspects of our life. You can really truly apply God's love to this and be healed and whole and free from rejection and be walking in liberty if you will obey and do what Jesus say and he told us in the commandment in his new commandment love one another as I have loved you not remembering is a way God has loved us so how do we appropriate that in our life? Now, I'm giving you an example. In the middle of an argument, the enemy will take one thing that y'all talking about. It could be something that happened today or yesterday. Then he'll bring up something that happened two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two years ago, ten years ago. And now you fussing and dragging each other across the floor based off something that happened and supposed to be forgiven. That's when we now I. You know, especially as a believer, we are supposed to be walking in forgiveness. Now, the aspect of forgiveness that we should walk in and the aspect of love we should walk in is choosing not to remember. And this takes more work than you think it do. It takes prayer. It takes realizing that Jesus is remembering your sins. It takes realizing that how much that he gave, he loved you and he forgave you to really start living this towards anybody and this is one of the main problems that why people are um, suffering from a spirit of rejection which leads to depression anxiety worry suicidal tendencies mental illness is because people refuse to do and do it god's way so this is two aspects i'm not getting no deeper than that <coughs> because i believe <coughs> part of the problem is not loving the way god said told for us to love all right and i want to pray with you and I want to teach you the new commandment. I want to teach you what this means. Um, we're going to be going through this. This is the only way I, this is the only way I learned how to overcome the new commandment. I know that uh, uh, overcome the spirit of rejection. And when I start living this towards my wife, this is when I begin to gain freedom from what seemed to be rejection. And really, it was just her right to say no. And she wasn't really doing me wrong. It was just my own insecurities and my own shortcomings and my own viewpoint of how I view myself, my low esteem of how I view myself. And when she told me no, I took it to heart and to personal and too personal. And this is many people's problem. Then Jesus began to get to give me practical things. Now, I'm going to real quickly go through these. He began to give me practical things. I remember one time he began to teach me. He said, get up and cook a breakfast. You know, I was like. You know, that was a real big struggle. You know, if Jesus, he, you know, if he wasn't Lord over my life, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, and it was uh, during a time where, you know, I'm struggling. You know, my wife working, I'm at home. She tired. She don't want to do nothing. Excuse me. And Jesus tell me to get up and cook. My mama cooked breakfast. I, daddy didn't cook breakfast. I'm, I'm not used to that. I'm not cooking breakfast, you know. And Jesus tell me to get up and cook her breakfast. Get up and cook a breakfast when she do what she want. When she when she do what you want, 
get up and cook up breakfast when she do what you don't want. And it taught me to love her past my feeling and past how I felt. And it moved me to a realm of obedience despite what my flesh was telling me. Then he began to tell me, and then I began to speak to those thoughts of rejection. He told me to speak to it. You know, she about the devil be devil, the enemy or rejection would say, you know, she don't love you. She don't love you. She don't care nothing about you. And I began to, and if I didn't know God's love, I would, you know, Jesus taught me to respond to it. So, Jesus loved me. Jesus is in love with me. And then I start receiving God's love in the middle of feeling rejected and rejected. And that is what made that aspect of learning how to do that over and over and over again, over and over and over again, refusing to accept rejection and, and, and just went after God's love with all my heart that he's in love with me. No matter what, what a person do or don't do, I'm still good. No matter what a person say or don't say, I'm still good and I'm still and I'm content. You learn how to be content with godliness. And that's another whole nother process. I love you. I pray that it's add value to your soul. God bless you. Um, please like, share and subscribe. Um, I open up my life hoping that it reveals some things that may help you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you. See you in the next video.